so hey what's up and welcome to another scratch tutorial in this tutorial we're going to be making a platform again Wait. so first things first I accidentally deleted the cat so I'm going to paint a new sprite and name this player and I'm going to zoom in now and draw a box how this thing works I'm going to convert it to bitmap. It's just I find it easier zoomed in on bitmap to get it exactly centered. Uh, one. Hmm. Being a little slow. There we go. Now that we've drawn our box, we want to first create some variables x speed all our variables in this tutorial will be for this but only x speed y speed for this but only remember this for this but only um air time for this but only and count for this but only so now we've got these four variables. So once we're going to be starting out using our X speed and Y speed. These are going to store how fast we're moving left and right. No, no, just generally anywhere. And we're going to start with these both at zero as we don't want to start moving. But to actually make us move when we change our speed, we want to change our X and our y by x and y speed and then just to show you that I'm actually moving I'm going to constantly change x speed by 1 here there you go I've not and let me start we'll start not moving I may also well add to go to x0 y0 Now we'll need an two if thens. One if then right arrow, one if right arrow press, one if left arrow pressed. And now when we press right, we want to change your x speed by one. And when we press left, we want to change it by negative one. This is where our speed is going to be. So in the right arrow, let's say we wanted our speed to be 5. I'd make this one 5 and this one negative 5. And we've got to keep them the same but make this one negative. Or else when we, I'm pressing left arrow and I've not got a negative and I move right. So I'll keep that one negative. Now, if you notice, I've tapped it only once and I do not slow down. And that can be really irritating. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to set x speed to x speed multiplied by 0.9. What this is doing is setting itself to only 90% of itself. That's like each time I run it, I will subtract 10% from my x speed so that I will slowly slow down. You can change this value, but remember it's got to stay between 0 and 1. And also you can do it with division if you like, but that'd be slightly different. Uh, and this is just my preference. So I'll drag it in here. And now you can see I slow down. So our motion is done. Now it's time for our gravity. So I'm going to change our y, my y speed by negative one here. This will get us to fall down, as you can see. And if you want our gravity to be more, we can do for example negative 10 which will make it fall really fast I just like to keep it a negative 1 for now and now we're going to add like the ground checks well the collision with the ground so I'm going to make a new spike name it ground and just draw some simple boxes And now you can see our player goes straight through and this is not what we want. So I'm going to make a custom block. Or now they're just, it's just called make a block. 
and I'm going to name this um, floor slash roof check. Now I'm going to add an input for my Y speed. Also make sure it's got to be this input, number of text, as it's going to be a number. And make sure to make it run that screen afresh. Because what this block's going to do is it's going to check here inside the ground. It'll then pull us out one pixel by one pixel to make sure it's exact. And then it's got to do this instantly. Run that screen refresh makes it do it instantly. Okay. We also need to make another block called wall check. And then we'll add a number of text input for X speed. And I'll make this one run that screen fresh as well. Cool. I moved to one out of the way for now work on this one. So drag in a repeat until not not touching ground. And what it's going to repeat until doing is it's going to check if we're moving up or down. And then move it the opposite way one pixel at a time until out of the ground. First we need to check if we're moving up or down. So if y speed is greater than zero, that basically means why if y speed is positive, that means we've moved up, we'll move down back out. So I'll grab a uh, change y by negative one and change y by one in the other side like that but our player still goes for this is because i forgot to actually run this block so in the bottom i've got to drag in the floor slash roof check block that we've just made and put our y speed in that input there we go But there is one thing we need to change. First, we want to set our Y speed to zero in this. And now we need to record how long we're in the air. So, he's done this one, so we're going to change our air time by one. But if we're on the ground, we want to set air time to zero. If we're on the ground, that's one where it moves up, because it's just went in the ground and it's got to move up. So remember to set air time to zero here. Now if I show airtime, you can see it's more or less at zero. Then if I drag us into the air, it's not a zero. Now I'm gonna hide airtime and set airtime to zero to begin with. And now that we know how long we're in the air, we can add the jump. The jump is fairly simple. We're going to check if we press the up arrow or whatever you want to use for the jump. And then if we press it, we want to make sure to use set, not change. And we want to set Y speed to 10. We can change this for our jump height here. So now when we press up, we jump but there is a problem if I hold up I can just constantly jump I can jump in the air I can hold up and this isn't very good how we change this is by using our newly working airtime and check if we're pressing up and airtime is less than five so it just makes it feel nice because sometimes it just thinks oh I can't jump that's because you're actually off the ground and you don't notice. So that's why I'm going to make it still allow you to jump if you've been off the ground for just less than anything less than five frames. So now, no, wait, one way. So now it should work. Remember to have it this way round, not like I did. But now there is another problem. We can go through walls. We can jump over it, but we can just go straight through it, which you don't want. So now I've got to work on our wall check. 
How we're going to do this is similar to this one. Yeah, actually slightly different. So just copy what I'm doing here. So we just do the same, but only moving up as if we're only in a floor. And each time we count how much we've moved up. And we'll do this until count is greater than 10. Until count is greater than 10 or we're not touching the ground. So if we're any less, if let's say it has to move up. So if we're on the floor, it will only have to move us up like five, for example, and move us back down and say, yep, yeah, we're not in a wall. While if we're in a wall, we'll have to move up loads to get out of it. And it'll think, hmm, counts way more than 10. We've got to move him back down and right. So if count is greater than 10, we want to then um, move back down from our testing and the opposite way. So we're going to change our y by zero takeoff count. That means if count was 10, we'll move negative 10. If count was negative 10, we'll move 10. We can just do blank takeoff, but just to show you, I'll put a zero here. So we move back down, and now I've also got to move the opposite of what we moved. So if we had moved 10 last time, we'll move the opposite of it and move negative 10. So now I've just cleaned this up. Now lastly, we've got to drag in our wall check. If it doesn't work, you've got to make sure the wall check is before our floor slash roof check. This is really important. And now you can see I can't go through walls. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you.